Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Ren digging it down, coming at you from the scale of butt farm in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. What is going down, everybody in the world? Hope you're having a great freaking day today, man. The weather is absolutely awful in England today, guys. The wind is blowing like a freaking hurricane up in here. There's rain, there's hail. It is absolutely terrible. And that means it is a perfect day to play Minecraft from morning until night. Am I right, guys? It's going to be sweet. We're kicking things off over here in the Skeller Butt Farm because I would like to go on a little bit of an adventure with you guys to kick things off today. And I want to make myself a decent decent iron sword to do so. I've reset the enchanting table to get a pretty good enchant at level 30. Fire aspect 2. Beautiful. We're putting it on an iron sword, which isn't the greatest, I guess, but I guess it's going to do for now. I want to do a little bit more grinding, see if I can get unbreaking onto this iron diamond sword. And if you're wondering why I don't just make a diamond sword, well, we're out of diamonds. We're completely out of diamonds. So, Today, we're going to be heading back into the caves underneath the mines of the dog. You guys remember we went and checked out an abandoned mine shaft uh, earlier on in the series, but got kind of wrecked, didn't we? We didn't last very, very long down there. Luckily, now we've got these beautiful enchanted iron gears that we made for ourselves a couple of episodes ago. And I'm feeling confident, baby. I think we can get down there and we can do some serious adventuring, maybe find ourselves some dungeons and chests and stuff like that. And uh, I do need to stock up on some uh, some iron and hopefully some diamonds uh, because today we're getting technical, guys. Today we're going to be working on our first redstone contraption. We're going to find a way to move all of the items from the minds of the dog into the storage hole and it's going to be freaking awesome ladies and gentlemen it is my privilege and my honor to introduce you to the jank blade <laughs> take a look at this bad boy guys fire aspect two sharpness three unbreaking three it is an iron sword, which kind of sucks, but it is going to do for now. This sword is going to take us places that we have not been yet in the series, deeper into the unknown. Let's go on a little bit of an adventure, guys, and uh, hopefully this jank blade can help us out against the creepers and the freaking scalar butts down here. As I mentioned, the goal is to discover... Oh. <laughs> the goal is to discover some iron and potentially find ourselves some diamonds, but I'm going to need quite a lot of iron, actually, and this is actually kind of awkward right now. There we go. I did it, and I've also just realized that I didn't bring any building blocks with me, so that's great. Shall we use some diorite to, to use as our building blocks? Plug up those holes with some diorite? This doesn't even look like the abandoned mine shaft, does it? This kind of looks like just a tiny little segment of it. Um, right. Let's see if we can actually get... Oh, here we go. There we go. You see, it's really important. Sometimes you just need to dig through the walls of these mine shafts, and uh, you find other stuff, and uh, that looks like we've been exploring down there. So let's go a little bit deeper in here, see what we can discover, and any iron that we we come past, and I've already run past some because I'm a terrible noob explorer. Let's get some of this jazz in the belly. Uh, but any iron that we come across, my friends, we need to, we need to harvest because today we're going to need quite a few hoppers, and hoppers require a ridiculous amount of iron to produce. So the more iron we get in the belly, the better, and the, the less mobs that we find, the better too. It's looking a little bit quiet around here at the moment, uh, which kind of worries me. I see something moving down there, or that's just a fence. It's okay. I think the paranoia is starting to kick in. It's kind of like the calm before the storm. You know what I'm saying? Whenever these abandoned mine shafts are this quiet, I know that something's about to go down at some point. Uh, but we're going to try to keep focus. Ooh, hello! We found our very first little minecart chest up in here. Hopefully we get something sweet. Some activator rails. Those are kind of expensive to make, so I'll take some of those. And some rails and uh, some pumpkin seeds too. Well, you can never have too many pumpkin seeds, am I right? Let's place a block above there just to show us that we've actually opened that one and we don't waste any time the next time we come across it because let's face it we're probably going to run around in circles over here i think there's another chest down here though oh no it's not it's a little bit of gravel um so yeah keep your eyeballs open for the iron and let's try and get as much of this iron in our belly as possible we've got this brand new beautiful diamond pickaxe with us terror baby doing the business efficiency for unbreaking silk touch
touch. Oh, yes. Going to help us get all these resources as quickly as possible. Oh, actually, there is something that I want to try out. One of you guys suggested adding some cobwebs into the uh, the nether portal cave. I think that's a really cool idea. We could even use some cobwebs in the storage hole. Maybe there's some corridors that have uh, not been cleaned properly by the hobbits. You know what I mean? And I'm wondering if our silk touch pickaxe will be able to pick up an, a whole cobweb. Let's check it out. It takes forever to break them, which is kind of annoying. Uh, did that pick up the whole cobweb? Uh, did that just... That just... Hmm. That just broke the cobweb, didn't it? Well, that plan failed miserably. <laughs> Apparently, I can't pick up cobwebs with a silk touch pickaxe. Probably have to use a silk touch axe to pick up cobwebs. Um, I'm just assuming. I actually don't know. Hey, Barry, what's happening, baby? Welcome to the adventure, my beautiful little friend. Um, okay, here's our first problem. There is a cave... A Freaking cave spider spawner over here. This sword better start doing the business. Let's get this thing lit up as quickly as possible. There we go. Two hits on that cave spider with this brand new sword. That's absolutely beautiful. Happy that I made this. Also, where is my axe? I didn't actually bring an axe with me. So, good job, Ren. I didn't bring an axe to an abandoned mine shaft where there's a whole bunch of wood. So, good job, my friend. Good job. Okay, let's see if we can actually clear this, this stuff a little bit easier. Use a little bit of water up in here. Um, but so far, not exactly the most scary of adventures. I'm kind of happy about this, man. This is kind of sweet. I want to take this opportunity, actually, while I'm digging through cobwebs and trying to find myself some iron, to have a very quick chat with you guys out there about this series. Um, we're on, what, episode... I can't even remember now. 14, I think, something like that. We're going pretty good, man. I'm having a real, real good time recording this series, mostly because you guys are giving me such great feedback, so much love in the comments. Oh, there's a freaking dungeon down here. Let's get this thing lit up. Oh, it's just a spider dungeon. That ain't the end of the world. We should be able to deal with these freaking arachnids pretty easily. Let's just get some light back here. Okay, there we go. Get out of here. These are like the, the really bad versions of the, the other ones, the poisonous ones, right? So I don't really mind seeing a bunch of those. Those don't scare me at all. Um, anyway, like I was saying, absolutely loving recording this series because you guys are just giving me so much freaking love and you guys are enjoying it so much too. However, I would like to do at this point in the series, because we've been going for some time now, let me get this freaking lit up real quick, real quick. There we go. I would like to do a little bit of a, a litmus check, you know, a health check. How are you guys enjoying the series right now? I want you guys to be completely honest with me. If you want to, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but I'd love to know your honest opinions on how the series is going for you, the audience. How are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying the pace? Are you enjoying the way that I'm producing the videos? Are you enjoying the the, um, the storylines, the content, anything you'd like to see changed, hit me up in the comments. Um, would absolutely love to get your guys' feedback. I, I just want to make the best possible series that I can for you guys. And it's very important that every now and then you get some opinions from your audience, right? So that you, you kind of know that you're on the right track. Um, and uh, you guys sometimes come up with really cool ideas too that inspire me. So always love hearing from you guys. Hit me up in the comments, okay? Let me deal with this freaking final cave spider over here. Hi, you, you think I don't see you there? Dude, I, I freaking smell you, dude. I smell you. Take arrow straight to the butt, you arachnid butthole. Okay, nice. The health situation not looking too good. Let's go crank open that chest over there. See what we can get out of this thing. And there's some more mossy cobblestone here for us too, which we need to collect. Golden apple. I'll take it. Some TNT. Thank you, baby. Uh, we don't actually need any of this other jazz. What is this? Melon seeds? Oh, we don't have melons yet for the farm. Sweet. We just found our very first... What? Oh my goodness, dudes, we just found the best enchanting book in the game. Mending, baby, mending, that's amazing. That is gonna go straight onto Terra, our pickaxe, which means that when we get a, uh, experience, when we get the green experience balls, it will actually heal Terra, it will mend Terra. Isn't that insane? Oh my goodness, I cannot believe this, guys. This is so freaking lucky. These books are incredibly rare to find. 
mind. That makes me so freaking happy, guys. Oh, man. I knew today was going to be a good day of Minecrafting. This is beautiful. All right, I tell you what, guys. I'm going to explore this abandoned mine shaft just a little bit more. Try get as much iron as possible. If I come across anything else down here, I will bring you back. We got our first mending book, dudes. That is so awesome. Just stumbled across another dungeon, guys. I have secured the area, ready to crank open the chests with you guys. And uh, I realized that I may have got a little bit overexcited about finding that mending book. But for those of you guys who don't play Minecraft or have just started playing Minecraft, Mending is the best enchantment in the game. It is also the hardest enchantment to get. You see, the only way you can get mending books is from dungeons or from trading with villagers. And it's very, very expensive to trade with the villagers. And the reason that it's so good is because, as you guys know in Minecraft, items deteriorate as you use them. And what you can do in Minecraft is you can repair your items. So I could repair Terra with diamonds, but eventually you, will be, you won't be able to repair the item anymore. It gets to a point where it gets too expensive to repair and your item will eventually break and of course what mending does is it allows you to repair your items with experience which means that your item lives forever it never actually breaks and when you have an important pickaxe like Terra that you have worked really hard to create that is a really important part of your Minecraft world having mending on your item keeps that item alive for much longer than it would usually so very important enchant and I'm very excited that I've managed to get one of these books so early in the series now let's crank these chests open let's see if we can get anything else really good some tnt i'm happy with that a couple of iron horse armors which i'll actually take because you can only get iron horse armors and chests too they're kind of rare and i think we just found a golden freaking apple that is purple and this my friends is known as a notch apple named after the creator of the minecraft game and this is one of the rarest items that you can find in the game what is going on here what is this thing oh my goodness that scared the living freaking jazz out of me a skeleton riding a freaking spider what okay thanks for that minecraft i li i think i might have just pooped myself guys I Excuse my language, that scared the liver jazz out of me. A notch apple, best app golden apple you can get in the game. One of the rarest items that you can find in Minecraft. In our, <laughs> We found a menu book and a notch apple in one adventure. That is absolutely ridiculous. 51 iron ore also. Guys, let's get ourselves out of this place ASAP. I haven't explored the entire place yet, but you know what? Just like my mama always taught me, <laughs> when you are a Head, it is time to quit. Don't push it. You know what I'm saying? If you're winning, take your money and leave the casino. Don't spend it all before you lose it all. You know what I'm saying, guys? Let's get ourselves out of here with this freaking notch apple and this mending book. This has been an insane adventure. Absolutely beautiful. Let's pick up a little bit more iron while we're here. Rain dog, quit while you're ahead, dude. Stop it. Don't let the freaking gambling kick in. Okay, I'm going to focus now. Ignore everything just get myself out of here problem is i can't remember how to get out so this might not go too well actually bad news guys i've been completely lost for the last 10 minutes or so i cannot find my way out of that mine shop so i'm gonna do the noob thing and i'm gonna dig myself straight up <laughs> to the surface just gonna dig a staircase taking us straight up usually i don't like doing this because it wears away the durability of my pickaxe but we found a vending book so i don't have to worry about that also at the very bottom of the staircase is another massive wing of this abandoned mine shaft that we still need to explore so at least this is going to give me an idea of how to actually get back here the only thing that worries me is that i think we might actually pop up in the middle of the ocean somewhere let's have a look hopefully we pop up somewhere that we can recognize okay not in the ocean at least and we're somewhere in the world didn't bring a map book with us or a compass so we kind of got to get our bearings again around here i think we're kind of close to to the mole we are there's the freaking cow pen over there okay that is excellent let's just add a little pillar over here just so that we know how to get back here and this is actually kind of interesting this is showing us that that abandoned mine shaft um, goes all the way 
back to the mole hole, right? So we might be able to find a couple of spawners down there. Then we could make a farm out of them, right? If we could find some spawners close to each other, we could make a much better uh, farm than our skeleton farm at some point. And it's much closer to the mole hole too. So that's kind of curious to know. I don't have to tell you guys how amazing it feels to get back from an epic Minecraft adventure with a bunch of ridiculously rare loot in your inventory. You get home safe and sound. You pack your furnaces with everything that needs to get smelted and uh, you know that everything is good in the world, right? Feels amazing. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do before we get crafting today, guys. Number one, I have named the notch apple that we found, Apple of the Dog, and I'm going to add it to our chest over here with the seed of the cyber dog because, uh, well, that was the discovery of our very first notch apple together here on the series, and actually, I just realized we should probably name this Apple of the Cyber Dog just to keep it, like, consistent because we got seed of the cyber dog and now we got apple of the cyber dog right so that's pretty sweet i'd also like to throw this mending book onto terra as fast as possible because now terra is actually going to get healed whenever we get xp as i've explained to you guys so that is amazing baby oh i'm so happy with that let's drop off uh, the mossy cobblestone that we found too and uh, we're pretty much ready to go now aren't we beautiful stuff apple of the cyber dog in the chest with the seed of the cyber dog too oh actually there's one more thing that we need to do right we need to plant some of these melon seeds that we discovered too let's go do that man let's go get these melon seeds up into the fields of the dog and then we can start working on some technical stuff uh working out how to get items up from the mine into the storage hole it is the middle of the night right now and it is raining so this is a little bit frightening but that's okay let's plant ourselves a couple of melons melons grow in the same way as pumpkins uh if you would like to know how that works so they do need another space next to them to actually grow uh, maybe I can show you here if I have some bone meal. I don't have some bone meal here, unfortunately. But let's plant some melons over here. We'll come back and check them out. Uh, maybe at the end of the episode. All right, my friends. Time to take it down a couple of notches, shall we? It's been a super exciting start to my morning of Minecraft. But I'm in the mood to do some crafting now. Let's settle in with a tasty beverage. And let's try to figure out a way to get all of the items from the mines of the dog up here into the storage hall. Got myself a cup of coffee over here. Give me one second. Mm. Caffeine straight to the butt, man. Always need a little bit of coffee when I start doing technical stuff. Today, guys, we're going to be using a little bit of redstone magic. Our first redstone contraption of the series to get items from all the way down there to all the way up here. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there's a pretty easy and awesome way to do it. I'm going to try and show you guys today. Now, the first thing that we need to do, of course, is extend that delivery chute by a few blocks because we had to shift the lobby a few blocks in this direction to sort of incorporate the design of the storage hole, right? So first thing that we're going to need to do is dig another one, two, three, four, five blocks worth of tunneling down here. So let's get down into the item delivery chute. One, two, three, four, five five and that should take us directly up to the new hole i'm going to dig one more block just in case and i think what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to pillar myself back up the original hole and then dig down the new hole that should probably be the easiest way to do it so let's get ourselves all the way back up to the storage hole now we're going to be exploiting a little bit of minecraft mechanics today which is going to be really really cool and uh, we can actually use the mechanics of this game to make items go up right and there's lots of different ways that you can make items go up but this is probably one of the easiest ways and probably one of the cheapest ways to do it and what we're going to have to do is dig ourselves a three by three hole uh, or delivery aqueduct I guess it's going to take us all the way down to our item aqueduct so I'm going to dig this three by three all the way down and then we'll get back together when I get down there oh hi there cyber dogs what are you doing all the way up there uh, it's kind of dangerous Get, get your butts down here before you break a leg or something. <laughs> oh man, looks like the caffeine is starting to kick into the brain, guys. Anyway, I have dug a 3x3 three three hole all the way down from the storage hole down to the item delivery system. And we're going to be installing a redstone contraption here to send blocks all the way up to the storage hole. And we're going to be using a little bit of an exploit in Minecraft to achieve this. We are going to be exploiting the mechanics of how blocks and items work when they are uh, thrown on the ground in Minecraft okay let me try and explain this as best as I can when you have a block or an item in Minecraft that is on the ground like this 
if you can somehow push that block or item into a solid block, the block is going to behave, or that item or block that is on the ground is going to behave in a very peculiar way. If you can push a block into another block that is completely surrounded by blocks, the block that is in that block that you've pushed it into will always go upwards, okay? I can't explain why, it's just how it works. So, if you have a solid pillar of blocks like this, right, and you have an item that gets pus pushed into the center of that pillar, that block is always going to go up. Now, that gives us a very interesting way to send blocks upwards in Minecraft. There are, are other ways to send blocks up in Minecraft. You can use uh, uh, things called droppers and you can make a whole chain worth of droppers to send items upwards. But this is one of the most efficient ways to send blocks up in Minecraft. Now, in order to do this, we are going to need a number of different machines or a number of redstone contraptions to do this. Starting off with something called a dropper. Okay, a dropper is cobblestone and a bit of redstone and we're going to make one of those now and this dropper is going to go directly in the center of our 3 by 3 shoot. So we're going to plop this down over here. Is that in the center? I don't think so. Let's just try find the very center of this. I think I'm probably one block off. Okay, no, that is in the center. Okay, now check this out. A dropper is a very, very cool uh, block in Minecraft. Let's make for ourselves a, just a button, just a random button out of wood and I'm going to show you guys exactly what a dropper does. Uh, well, it's got a hole at the top of it of course and as you can guess what it does it is going to spit the item out of it right check this out boom it spat the item out of that dropper right now check this out if we stick a block on top of the dropper and we put some blocks in there we hit that button you can see that that item came out the side I think it's going to come out randomly um, but the, what's happening of course is the dropper is spitting the block into the block that is directly above the dropper right you can see it's coming out the center of that block which is very interesting now take a look at this. If we surround this block that is sitting on top of the hopper with other solid blocks, when we hit that button, that block is going to be spat out directly above that block. You see that? Look at that. It's coming up at the very top of that. Now, as I explained a little bit earlier, if we just make sure that this 3 by 3 is completely solid, when we spit some blocks out, what we will see, of course, um, is that those blocks are going to be in the very center of this tube. So, with that in mind, we are going to be able to send blocks all the way up the center of this 3x3, if I can actually get into it, for as long as we make this 3x3 completely solid. And that is how we're going to get the items up there. So, what we need to figure out together now is a way to make this dropper spit out items automatically when they arrive from the item delivery chute, which is over here, right? Now comes the interesting bit. Now comes the bit where we get to apply a little bit of redstone magic up in here. A couple of episodes ago, we went to the nether to get ourselves some quartz, didn't we? I've got the quartz in my inventory over here. And with this quartz, we are going to be making something called a comparator. And to make a comparator, we're going to make some redstone torches first. Uh, so let's just make ourselves, I don't know, 10 or so redstone torches, I guess. We're going to need a few of these. And what that is going to open up is a couple of redstone things that we're going to need. Number one, we're going to need a comparator, which looks a little something like this. Nether quartz with some redstone torches. So let's make ourselves a comparator we're also going to need a couple of repeaters or in fact we're going to need one redstone repeater which is made with some stone some redstone and some uh, redstone torches so let's make for ourselves a beautiful redstone uh, repeater over here and now we get to do the really fun bit of redstone oh man I've only recently be get, been getting into redstone on the on my hermacraft series so I've been learning a little bit about redstone and it's been a really fun ride for me and hopefully I can apply my knowledge today in this episode now let's make our ourselves a bunch of hoppers. Uh, we made some of these in the series before and that's why I needed all of that iron. We're going to need quite a few hoppers. Let's just make like five hoppers for now, right? And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing hoppers into this dropper. This dropper kind of acts like a chest and if there's a hopper that goes into the dropper, items will actually go into the dropper from the hopper. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So the idea is all of those items are going to be flowing down from the mines of the dog and these hoppers are going to be collecting them and sending them into to this dropper over here okay so I've just made myself a little bit of a hopper chain and uh, let's actually test this out right this water stream is direct is this a hopper over here I can't actually see uh, it doesn't look like it. the water stream needs to flow over the hopper right so there we go now any item that arrives on top of that that uh, hopper over here so for example let's throw for ourselves down 
a couple of these stone blocks. Let's just swim a little bit up here. So say, for example, we are sending items from the mines of the dog into the delivery aqueduct. We're going to send them into the water stream. And of course, uh, they are going to land on top of that hopper. And that hopper is going to send those items all the way into the dropper. There you can see we are collecting the stone. Now, the trick is, how are we going to get this dropper to trigger and spit those items out into the delivery aqueduct that's going to go upwards? Well, we're going to be using this thing called a comparator. And what a comparator does is it it looks at the block that is behind it, right? So this comparator is currently looking at this hopper. Now, check this out. Whenever a block passes through this hopper, you'll see a bit of a redstone signal going on in that comparator, right? And uh, let me show you in a different way. Uh, if we put some blocks in here, you can see that as those blocks are passing through this hopper over here, they're actually sending a signal into that comparator. We're going to be using that signal to actually trigger this dropper over and over again. Now, we're going to use this repeater, which actually extends the power of the redstone signal from this comparator, and we're going to be sending that into a redstone line, and then we're going to be bringing this redstone line back into the comparator. Now, take a look at that. What is happening, uh, what you can see happening there is as the items pass through this hopper, this, uh, this comparator is getting triggered over and over again because it's sending a redstone pulse from the hopper. That redstone pulse is going through the repeater and then it's coming back into the comparator, which is turning the comparator off for a brief second. And then it's triggering again as those items pass through this hopper, right? So we get this sort of triggering effect. I know that a lot of you guys know this, okay? But some of the peeps watching this don't know this. So I'm just taking everybody through this step by step. Now, we can use this triggering that is going on to actually turn this dropper on and off over and over again. And we're going to be doing that by sending this signal into this dropper. And we're going to do that with a little bit of redstone magic. I'm going to make myself an iron block over here just so that we can make it a little bit fancy. And what we're going to be doing, guys, is we're going to be running this redstone signal that we're getting from this system into this iron block just like that. And that is actually going to uh, send a pulse of redstone into this iron block, which is actually going to start turning this hopper on. So take a look at this. We're going to throw some items in here. And what we should see is that hopper starting to spit those items out, right? And that's because it is triggering this redstone uh, signal into the iron block. And the iron block is turning the dropper on briefly, just clicking the dropper over and over again. So you guys should be able to pick up what I'm putting down over here now. If we create a 3x3 three three solid uh, pipe of stone bricks, we should be able to send the items all the way up to the top of the storage hole. And that is how you send items upwards in Minecraft in a very nice, cheap, easy way. The most expensive thing that you need is the nether quartz, of course, for the comparator. Uh, so you do need to take a trip to the nether. All right, Cyber Dogs, here we go, baby. The final step to actually put this little project to the test. I've been looking forward to this so much this week, guys. Hopefully I can make this work that I've just finished building the dropper delivery pipe all the way into the lobby of the storage hole. And what we're going to be doing is collecting the items in a double chest over here. For now, I'm just going to add a double chest with a hopper going into it. And as I have shown you guys, all the items that are going to be traveling up this pipe are going to be traveling up the center, right? So their last position is going to be in this dropper over here. And of course, that dropper is going to send those items into the chest. So we now have potentially a way to deliver those items from all the way downstairs to all the way upstairs and all we need to do now is get down to the bottom of the mines of the dog, throw some items into that delivery aqueduct and actually test the entire system, right? So let's get down there, throw a couple of stacks of blocks in there and hopefully we can get back up in time uh, to actually see those items being delivered into the storage hole. And yeah, this is kind of like a three-part system, right? Which is really cool. We've got the delivery, the item delivery chute, we've got the dropper delivery pipe and then we've got the item storage system system at the very top, right? So let's throw a bunch of these stone blocks into our item delivery chute and hopefully we have engineered everything perfectly here, right? All of those items traveling down the chute looking beautiful, uh, I might add. A little bit slow, but that's okay. Um, there we go. Let's just get a few more of these in there. Beautiful. Now let's go make sure that this is actually working. Of course, there's one more thing that we're going to need to install over here and that is an automatic way to send items into that item delivery chute over there. But we will tackle that bridge in the next episode. So for now, I just want to make sure that I've done my redstone correctly here and that everything is working. So let's get back into the storage hole, guys. Double check this jazz, baby. Hopefully, this thing is going to be cranking. We 
should see some blocks popping up at any moment now above this hopper. There it is. And actually, I think I need to add one more block over here to make sure that it's coming up. And let's have a quick check. Um, is it coming up? Yes, it is. You can just see them popping up very briefly. Every now and then, you see them landing on top of that hopper. And uh, it looks like they're actually shooting out the side there. I think because uh, that chest is actually not a solid block. So, yeah, we're going to have to find a way to do this in a better system. All right, I've thrown a bunch more items into the item aqueduct, guys. And as you can see, there are blocks passing up there. I also uh, stuck this hopper correctly into this one because it was actually facing the block below and not the actual hopper itself. So, we should see a bunch of items popping out here. Absolutely beautiful. There they are coming, and that hopper is sucking them up super quickly and delivering them into this hopper, which is sending them into the chest. And there we go. It is freaking working, dudes. We are cooking with gas now, baby. We now have a way to very cheaply get items from the bottom of the Mines of the Dog all the way into the storage hole. And all we have to do now is work out a beautiful way to actually make the center, right? We can't have it looking like this. Looks a little bit strange. I'm gonna have to come up with a really sweet design for this. And of course, we're gonna have to work out a way to automatically uh, push those items into the item aqueduct uh, in the minds of the dog. But we're gonna do that in the next episode. I'm super happy with this, dudes. Absolutely amazing, man. What a day it has been. An epic adventure. Mending book discovered, notch apple discovered, and awesome item pipe delivery system of doom created. That is what I'm talking about, guys. Hope you have enjoyed the episode, man. For now, we've run out of time, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, remember to smackity smack that like button if you haven't subscribed yet. Smackity smack the subscribe button. And, uh, well, what can I say? Great day of Minecraft. We'll smell you all in the next freaking episode. <laughs> goodbye, my friends.